Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be doing the Add Primitive tool. This is a new Blender tool that's pretty amazing. I've been waiting for this and it's finally here. Uh, it's still pretty new, but I want to show you what it can do. So notice we still have our measurements here from our last lesson. Uh, that's because we are in the measurement tool. But if we just hit Add Cube, those will go away. And notice as we're hovering over Suzanne, you should be seeing this little grid appearing, but you should be able to kind of hover and notice as I'm moving my mouse onto certain planes, it's shifting the plane. And this is so fun and magical. And I've always wished Blender could do this and now it can. Uh, so what you want to do is just click on maybe somewhere on the head here and just click and drag. And now we're adding a cube. So this is the base of our cube. So just kind of move your mouse around and you can do anything you want. I'm going to just do like a skinny rectangle here. And notice it's the same kind of on the same plane that we did almost as if it was on like the roof of a house. If you want to like place a chimney, this is how you could go about doing it. Actually, let's just put a chimney. Let's put a chimney on our head guys and girls. So click there. And now notice I can put the, the, the direction of the cube in either direction. Um, that's, you know, even to that face there, I'm going to just come out like that. And looky there, we've got a little, chimney kind of coming out of Suzanne's head. And notice it's not perfectly flat. I'm not sure why. Let's try it here. So let's just do another chimney here. Bloop, bloop. But it should be snap dab onto it like that one. Yeah. So it should be like that. So do, you know, kind of just drag on here, bloop, drag into there. And there we can just make quick additions onto our design. So play around with that. It's so much fun. Just clicking and dragging and stretching out objects. Um, you can do it from the surface, which is what we've been doing. It's actually like looking for the surface and dragging out. And you can change up these to the cursor plane. So it's going to look for your 3D cursor and kind of make a design based off of that kind of area. Notice it's right kind of even with our 3D cursor um, from our viewpoint. And I'm going to just kind of hit X and delete that one. And then you can do... Um, cursor view and that's going to build um, an object I believe from your point of view not at all and so I don't really see what that one is doing if you hover over cursor view it'll actually tell you it's supposed to start the placement of the cube at a point projected onto the view plane at the 3d cursor position so it's working with the 3d cursor I'm not seeing how that is really related. Most of the time I just leave it on surface and that's usually what we're trying to do with the tool. You can also change the orientation. I'm just gonna keep mine on surface, but you could do it with the default view. You know, if you just wanted to keep it very square, you want it to be in that area on the head, but you didn't want it to be in that rotation of the actual plane you're projecting onto. Um, so that one just went straight up, as you can see, like if I was doing this one here, it would just be going straight up. Again, I'm just going to leave it on surface. That's the most fun one. But just so you know that there's other options that this tool can do. And right now we're snapping to the geometry, uh, but you can change it to the default and that will be whatever your snap settings you have. It'll kind of reference those. I'm just going to keep those off and keep it on geometry. Uh, another really cool thing that you can do with this tool is if you click and drag and hold control, it will kind of turn the snapping on. Like if I wanted something to just snap right to that point, I can build from there. Um, another cool thing you can do is pick another plane here and click and drag and hold shift and it will keep all of your edges very nice and even. So notice now I can do, you know, rectangles and things like that. But if I hold shift, it's going to make it all very even. So that's what that does. And then you can do the same thing. You know, shift will keep it a perfect cube, not like a thin uh, little rectangle there. It'll keep everything very cubic. So that's very nice too. So click and drag maybe in the very center of one of the planes here. So I'm going to try and get into the center of this plane right here and just click and drag. And notice it's going down and to the right. But if I hold alt, it's going to go from where we started and kind of expand out from the uh, the, the original click point there. So that kind of keeps everything even. You can even hold shift and that will keep it centered from that first click point and make sure you're staying very um, even with your edges. So that's alt and shift. And then if you take off shift, you can, you know, keep it, e keep it, um, keep it generating from the center point, but changing the width of it there. So 
Very cool tool. Uh, again, this is a pretty new tool to Blender, so they're still updating and changing it all the time. And one thing we didn't talk about, there's a little arrow here, so you can change this to different primitives. So it's gonna just be default to cube, but you can do cones and kind of project cones onto Suzanne. So everybody just put some cones on Suzanne. This is just too much fun to add cones. And you may be asking, why the heck would we ever wanna do this? Because sometimes you wanna just be able to quickly add quick textures and things, and then just Boolean or add these shapes to your original geometry so it's actually 3D printable. So you could just be like, spike, 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 you know, doing designs really quickly with this tool. So I think it's amazing. Let me know what you think in the Discord and once you get done playing with this. Um, so again, you can do, you know, hold and click and that will drop down this and you can do cylinders. So if you wanted to do cylinders, you can do that. And all those same buttons we talked about early are still going to apply, you know, the shift and control and alt, but it's just, it's just too much fun. So if I hold shift, it's gonna stay like a perfect uh, cylinder. And then I let go of shift and now it's very even. Um, we can also do UV spheres. I'm gonna go ahead and save because we're adding a lot of geometry here. So say if I wanted to add a little UV spheres, hold alt, it's gonna keep it right there on the, where I clicked on the eyeball there and click there. Now we got a little weird eyeball thing happening. And then we can click here, hold alt, and we've got another sphere. So that's how you would add UV spheres and same thing with icospheres. So play around with all those, it's super fun. Um, really cool, powerful tool um, that we are definitely gonna be exploring more and more into our intermediate and advanced lessons. So now you should feel pretty comfortable in object mode. We've been in object mode most of the time. And so now we're gonna start talking about editing our actual geometry, like the Suzanne head here and how powerful that can be. So let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson on edit mode.